All right, guys, I've had a lot of requests for my insulin protocol. Uh, before I do that, though, we need to go through insulin and understand it for bodybuilding, how it works. I'm going to give you my insulin 101 lecture today. By no means am I an expert in this shit, but I think I know more than the average dude. But, uh, you know, certainly there are, there are resources out there where you can learn more. Actually, go to the American Diabetes Association. They have tons of information. Uh, but we're going to dig into this uh, today. I... You know, so I hear insulin is dangerous a lot. Um, it is if you're stupid, <laughs> if you can't do math, uh, if you're lazy. Uh, but I, I'll go through all that. Before we do, I have some housekeeping first. Please hit that subscribe button down below. I would really appreciate it if you did. I get a lot of people watching my videos, not that many people subscribing. Pound the like button um, if you enjoy this video. Uh, if you have questions, put them in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to answer every single comment or question that I get. Um, and if you want to get in contact with me directly, my contact information is in the description. I am Paul K. Barnett on Instagram. And I am uh, my email is bigp3rd at gmail.com. All right, so insulin. What is insulin and how does it work? It is a 51 amino acid peptide hormone produced by the beta cells of the pancreas. Um, it was the first peptide hormone discovered by scientists. Um, it, is, it is responsible for regulating the metabolism of glucose, uh, fats, and amino acids. Uh, uh, it signals uh, the liver and muscle cells to, to absorb glucose. Um, and the fat cells to store fat, um, muscle cells to uptake amino acids as well. Um, it has an indirect, indirect anabolic action, um, and it does affect the synthesis of proteins in the muscle cells. Um, as I mentioned, it signals storage of amino acids. Um, uh, the beta cells secrete insulin as a response to high glucose levels, to lower the glucose, to signal to the cells to store any excess um, energy. Uh, glucagon is released when um, uh, glucose is too low. It is the opposite of insulin. It tells the body to release glucose from its uh, reserve stores, typically from the glycogen stores in the liver. Um, okay, skip the page here. Types. Um, all right, so types of diabetes. Uh, we need to understand this for bodybuilding because a lot of bodybuilders make themselves diabetic. Um, type 1 is an autoimmune um, reaction where the immune system destroys the beta cells. The body can no longer make insulin because there are no beta cells. Therefore, you need to supplement exogenous insulin. Um, to um, make up for the lack of insulin production. Type 2. This is a less commonly understood um, type of diabetes, and it seems to be the directors lump everything into this category that is not type 1, although now there are various subtypes of diabetes that are being uh, identified that are not neither type 1 nor type 2. I think they call them, they have subtypes like type 1B and etc., um, so type two is a combination of insulin resistant and resistance of beta cell burnout, um, typically caused by obesity and lack of exercise, um, in, in the average fat, lazy American, uh, but a lot of bodybuilders end up diabetic. They are not fat. They are not lazy. Um, what and they are definitely exercising plenty. What causes diabetes in bodybuilders is HGH with the combination of high carbohydrate diets. Um, HGH causes insulin resistance, and then they are pounding a ton of carbs, and your body has to release even more insulin than it normally would. Um, to push those carbohydrates into your reserves 
And what ends up happening is over a period of time, you burn out your beta cells. They can't keep up with the uh, quantity of carbohydrates that you're intaking. Your blood sugar rises. That would be the first sign. And over a period of time, your body just can't make its own insulin anymore or not enough insulin. Um, and you have a combination of HDH induced insulin resistance and lack of insulin production. Um, HDH in insulin. Uh, HTH uh, is counter-regulatory to insulin. Insulin optimizes the anabolic effects of HDH and inhibits its fat mobilized um, properties. The effects of the two hormones on glucose translocation tend to cancel each other out. Um, a cool NIH study I found also says that GH plus insulin was associated with a higher net balance of um, protein in the body than just insulin or HGH alone. So if you use the two together, you're going to increase protein metabolism in the body. That's kind of cool. Also, when you mix the two together, I have found that IGF-1 levels are higher as well on blood work. So why insulin for bodybuilding? Uh, there's really two main purposes on this one. Um, there's preventative and for anabolism for muscle growth. Um, for prevention, you can use insulin prophylactically to prevent beta cell burnout. I, uh, you know, if you're pounding a shit ton of carbs and you're taking HGH, you're putting a lot of stress on your beta cells. Um, you can supplement exogenous insulin to take pressure off those beta cells and, um, and um, you know, preserve them for later in life. People have this misconception that uh, taking exogenous insulin is like taking exogenous testosterone where it has a negative feedback loop that shuts insulin production down. It does not work that way. It is actually the opposite. So exogenous insulin actually takes pressure off the pancreas to produce insulin and maybe saves it long term. Um, as for uh, the muscle gaining uh, um, aspects of it, we know that in insulin promotes glycogen storage, which in the muscle, preferentially, if taken properly with high carbohydrates, low fats, you can push those carbohydrates into the muscle cell as glycogen storage. As you see, Milo Sarchev has his bullshit uh, hyperemia theory, whatever the fuck he calls it. Um, um, but anyway, you take insulin with carbs, work out, you're pulling all those carbohydrates and amino acids into the muscle cell, making those muscle cells look big and bubbly. Um, it also, as I mentioned earlier, you're increasing IGF-1 levels and improving protein synthesis. Uh, characteristics of the synthetic insulin. Before we look at it, we got to understand the characteristics of it. Um, there is the onset peak and duration. Those are the three characteristics of synthetic insulin. Um, onset is how long it takes before the insulin actually begins to lower glucose in the body. Uh, the peak is when the uh, insulin reaches its peak peak uh, concentration or peak strength, sorry, in the body. And duration is how long it takes for the body to eliminate that insulin and it no longer becomes active. Types of insulin. Um, we have, well, there's four types. There's really only three we're concerned about for bodybuilding purposes. We have rapid, intermediate, and long that we care about. Um, in the rapid, you have Humalog and Novolog primarily are what people use. Um, they're pretty similar. Novolog um, takes a little longer to peak than Humalog does, but they're pretty similar. Um, I, I've never used Novolog. I always use Humalog. Um, uh, with Humalog, it begins to work in 15 minutes or less. I usually take it about 15 minutes before I eat. Um, it peaks at 60 to 90 minutes and lasts for three to five hours in your body. When I use Hemolog, I take it every other meal. 
Um, and if you look at that three to five hour time frame, that works perfectly in my meal timing. I eat a meal every two and a half hours. So um, it will be five hours between doses. So that first dose of human log should be cleared from my system. So there, you know, so for example, let's say I take uh, 10 units with breakfast. If I took another dose two and a half hours later, probably somewhere between four and five of that 10 I took in the morning is still active. So I have to account for that if I am going to use insulin again. Math, if you wait um, between two meals, then you don't have to do math. So for you dummies out there that can't do math, that's the safer way to go. Uh, regular short-acting insulin, any of the type R insulins, humulin R, novelin R, yada, yada, yada. Um, they take 30 to 60 minutes to begin working. So usually you, you would take it about half hour before you eat. Um, the peak is anywhere from two to five hours, a much wider range, and um, six to eight hours in the body, so a much wider range. I do not like the short-acting insulins. Um, I, the few times that I have gone hypoglycemic, it is from the short-acting insulins. I have found the peak very difficult to predict, and it always seems like it hits right in the middle of leg presses, and then you're hypoglycemic and shaking um, uh, and <laughs> right in the middle of a workout never fails uh, and the long acting insulins uh, really the only two that I see used in bodybuilding are Lantus and Livermere primarily Lantus I see used um, Lantus has no peak it's really neat it stays in the body for up to 24 hours in reality it's somewhere around 20 um, so if you take 20 units of Lantus, you get about, you get about one unit in your system per hour, one, some, something like that. So, um, it is a basal insulin. It's just a kind of keep your body in balance. If you have issues with high fasting blood sugar, this will help. I like using Lantus. Um, I use it in conjunction with my fast acting insulin. I take my fast-acting insulin on my high-carbohydrate days, and I take Lantus every single day. Um, I, um, you know, I, Lantus helps take pressure off your pancreas. Um, is insulin safe? Uh, this is like the million and one dollar question. I hear people talk about how dangerous insulin is all the time, how you're going to die if you take insulin. Um, how you're going to make yourself diabetic if you take insulin. I mean, just all of this horseshit nonsense. That's just a bunch of fucking bullshit. Um, um, is insulin safe? Yes and no. Um, you know, there are millions of diabetics in this country that take it every single day, all day long. And I can assure you that the average fat, lazy American that's a type 2 diabetic is not weighing the food. They are not really paying attention to their dose of insulin. They're just jamming the shot a few times a day. And they probably go hypoglycemic all the damn time. And they just drink a Coca-Cola <laughs> to get rid of it. And that's why they keep getting fatter. Um, uh... I read a study uh, by the National Institute of Health where they studied 160 people that were admitted to the hospital um, in um, uh, hypoglycemic induced shock or coma. And out of those people, 96% survived. 2% um, had permanent... Uh, or 96% died out of that 96%, 2% had permanent damage, brain damage from hypoglycemic. So 94% survived without any long-term effects. And they were in full-blown hypoglycemic shock when they went into the hospital. Um, they found that the, the people that had died were, had waited more than uh, six hours to get to the hospital after being um, in hypoglycemic shock. So you have to fuck up really bad to go, in, to go into hypoglycemic shock and die. I'm not saying it can't happen. Stupid people do stupid things. And if you have normal insulin sensitivity or high insulin sensitivity, you are going to be 
more likely to go hypoglycemic than a diabetic who's severely insulin resistant. They can take more insulin and get away with it. So you have to be careful if you're young and your insulin sensitivity is good. Um, I, but I will ask you this. I challenge you this. How many bodybuilders have you heard of dying from diabetic or insulin um, and hypoglycemic insulin shock? I've heard of none. The most dangerous drug in bodybuilding is not insulin, ladies and gentlemen. They're diuretics. I hear of people dying all the time for fucking diuretics. And diuretics aren't spoken of in the same, in the, with the same scare tactics as insulin is. So, people take insulin all day long, every day, for years on end, and don't die. Now, I'm not saying you, that you can't. If you do a stupid thing, you might. Anyway, but that's my two cents on that one. So if you decide you are going to take insulin, there is a few safety best practices you need to take to make sure that you don't end up being that exception, that one person in a million that kills himself from fucking insulin. Um, so what kills? Uh, inaccurate measurement of insulin. Um, uh, people... I've heard of dummies buying the cheap vials of insulin on the internet and measuring it out with an insulin needle and they take 40 units instead of four. That's pretty dumb. It happens all the time because people don't know how insulin needles work. Uh, there's a way around that. There's a foolproof way of knowing how much insulin you're taking and that is to spend a little extra money and get an insulin pen. I have a picture of one. Down below, all you have to do is turn the knob. It tells you how many units you're taking. You push the little button. It does the work for you. You can be pretty dumb. You don't have to do any math. Um, not weighing and measuring your food. That's another way to get yourself in trouble. Um, that, that you measure out 10 units of insulin and think you're eating 100 grams of carbs and you're, carbs and you're actually eating 50 going to be in trouble not measuring your blood glucose you need to buy a glucose meter from walmart and start checking your glucose levels if you're going to be using insulin a lot of times you do not realize that you're hypoglycemic until it's too late um, i have that down here as well um, the symptoms of being hypoglycemic are shakiness fast pulse getting hungry really hungry all of a sudden sweating nervousness a few times I've been hypoglycemic, usually I get really nervous and shaky. My pulse gets high and I get really, really hungry. Like I have major sugar cravings. Um, but by that time, you know, it's usually really, really low. Um, I'm, I'm usually down in the 40s or 50s before I feel that. Um, dose. Uh, overusing insulin. Um, the rule of thumb is one unit of fast-acting insulin per 10 grams of carbs. For bodybuilding purpose, I would start off with 20 grams of carbs per unit. Um, and one rule of thumb is your carbs drive your doses, not your dose drives your carbs. So you get... I, I know bodybuilders always think more is better. So... When you, you know, your first time out and you go take 20 units before you go to the gym because Milo Sarchev said to take 20 units, you're going to be in trouble. Start off small, match it to your, your carbohydrates. Uh, let's say if we go to the 20 carbs to one unit insulin rule. So if you ate 100 grams of carbs before going to the gym, you're going to take five units of insulin. I would also highly recommend... Having an intra workout drink if you're going to take insulin pre workout with carbs in it to make sure you aren't passed out and sandwiched on the leg press, become a human accordion. Um, emergency preparedness is another thing. People are stupid. They don't they don't prepare for an emergency. You know, make sure you have some sort of simple sugar in your gym bag and with you at all times. If you're taking insulin, you can get these glucose tabs at the at the CVS or at Walmart or wherever they're super cheap like five dollars for a bottle of them carry them with you Also keep a meter at home and keep one in your a blood glucose meter in your gym bag if You start feeling hypoglycemic during the middle of your workout and you're not sure check your blood sugar You take a couple of these glucose tabs You're fine 
You don't. You might you might end up passed out on the floor in the gym and nobody knows what the fuck's going on. Um, not how to not get fat from using insulin. Uh, I hear a lot of people complain about the only thing they got on insulin is they got fat. It's because they're stupid and they don't know how to eat. Um, you know, once again, I said match your match your insulin to your macros, not the other way around. Don't eat more because you're taking insulin. Um, going hypo and then having to drink a fucking gallon of, of Coca Cola is not going to be good for you either. Um, usually where people fuck up with it, insulin, uh, um, taking is having a high fat diet while taking insulin. You should keep the carbs as low or the, I'm sorry, keep the fats as low as possible while you are taking insulin. Um, what happens in insulin is an indiscriminate storage hormone. If you're eating protein and carbohydrates, um, the, if your body has adequate, adequate carbohydrates for it's fuel needs. It is not going to burn any fat for fuel. It's going to only store that fat. So any excess fats you take in with your carbohydrates and your protein while taking insulin are most likely going to be stored as body fat. So why would you want to eat fats or high fat meals while taking insulin? You're just going to make yourself fat. Uh, your body likes to store carbohydrates as glycogen first, especially around workouts. So if you take your insulin around your workouts and you eat a low-fat, high-carbohydrate diet around your workouts, more than likely the majority of those carbohydrates are going to be stored as muscle glycogen, not as fat. Um, your body doesn't like converting proteins into body fat. It's very difficult to do. Um, so the most likely those proteins are going to be shoved or used for protein synthesis and amino acids shoved into the muscle cell. Um, anyway, that's all I got on this one. I will do another video on my protocol that should be coming up soon. Uh, you know, but this is the primer for that. Um, this is how not to be an idiot and <laughs> when using insulin and understanding how insulin works. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it.